Hey guys, today we're going to take advantage of some of the good weather outside. We've got probably, let me look outside, about 65 degree weather. We're at the beginning of March here and uh, we're going to have today and tomorrow without any rain and some pretty warm weather outside and I'm going to try to get some painting done to the inside of the cabinet. We have pretty much all the construction done to the inside of the cabinet except for a few odds and ends and those are things that if they are installed they can be touched up later if I want to paint on the same color as the insides. But right now what we want to do is get the cabinet outside. We're going to take a few things off like uh, we're going to take the speaker panel off right now. It still needs black laminate on this side and uh, we just haven't done that yet. So we can do that at any point even if I decide to paint the back to match the interior which I may do. But right now I want to take it off so I have good access to the insides and we can take the back panel off to have better access. And we're gonna paint everything in the inside the same color to match. And um, I'm also going to uh, take a little bit of precautions with uh, some of those holes like on those cleats back there. If you remember, I pre-drilled them and uh, made them so they could be kind of countersunk. I kind of like that. And uh, a lot of the screws like on that piece there that holds the uh, monitor in place, they weren't pre-drilled or, or sunk. I mean, they were sunk with the screwdriver itself, but I'm not going to worry if they get paint on the heads of them. But the ones on the rear cleats that you're going to see a lot when you're opening and closing the cabinet, if they uh, were drilled so they'd be sunk, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut little bits of this uh, dowel off you have to see here. This is a 3 8 inch dowel. And I'm just going to cut some small plugs and just temporarily stick a little rubber cement on there and just kind of glue them into those holes just to protect the heads of the screws. Um, I should never have to take them out, but I just like the way they look showing the actual color of the heads of the screws without gobbing paint in there. Plus, paint can collect in there and it'll be running later and I don't want a, a lot of paint running you know, while it's drying. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is prime the inside of the cabinet. And uh, I have some Valspar bare wood primer here that came right off the shelf. And then we have some Valspar, it says ultra paint and primer is what it says, but you know, most people recommend a, a separate primer too. Um, I'm not positive if this is just a can that they mixed in or if that's the actual brand name. I know it's Valspar when they mixed it, but they had so many questions there. I haven't bought paint in a long time. I had to tell them a finish for it, like how shiny it would be and everything. And if you can see right there, it's a sample of the color. It's kind of a dark gray. It's called Iron Frost, I think. Uh, yeah, Iron Frost. And um, interior paint. I bought a quart of it and for a quart of this I think it was maybe around twelve dollars or so, twelve or thirteen dollars. Um, if you buy it by the gallon you, you probably get it cheaper and everything but I, I know a quart would be plenty for this and uh, then the bare wood primer was nine dollars and something I believe and uh, we'll have plenty of that left over too. But uh, we just want to go ahead and give it a pretty decent finish on the inside even though it's not going to take a lot of abuse and we'll paint things like this panel here. We'll, we'll most likely paint that even though the control panel is going to go down on top of it. And uh, I'm not sure about like the front panel. It has this same white finish on the inside, just like uh, the panel on top here. And if you can see, you see it's a little dirty right there. I started taking this, uh, this uh, paper towel and some cleaner and cleaning that. I didn't notice that really that much while I was building the cabinet, but it had a little bit of a discoloration. I thought it was just from the fluorescent light that was up there, but I'm gonna clean that off real good before we go to painting. And I may paint it, I'm not sure. I may leave it white, but I just need to clean it up either way. And we're gonna do a little light sand into the inside of the cabinet. Some places like where the old uh, monitor was mounted in, kind of see right there, you can see where the old uh, shelf was installed. I wanna kind of sand that so it's not as noticeable after it's painted. And uh, some of the other places I'll just lightly hit, but we don't want to do an incredible job because we already have sanded plywood doing like the bottom and the back panels. It's already been pre-sanded before it was bought. And you may see a little wood grain through it, uh, but hopefully the primer will cover up most of that and some imperfections and stuff. And then we'll put the uh, finish coat on later. And uh, that's about it for right now. We'll get busy on this outside. Might show you some clips from that. Hey guys, we're just doing a little sanding on the main cabinet. Got it out on the porch here and uh, going to sand off uh, any splinters and stuff like that just to make it a little easier to paint. We're not going for a super smooth finish. It's all just going to be on the inside, but there's a few sp splintered locations and stuff like that that we can hit and uh, the old black paint on the inside. We're not going to sand it completely off just uh, to make sure it doesn't leave a little line where any of it stopped or where there was any wood glue from uh, previous cleats for the monitor support. We want to make sure that we get that leveled up and sanded down some. 
and then we'll blow it all out with the air hose and uh, then we'll come back and uh, put some plugs in some of those screw holes that I wanted to uh, kind of you know keep the heads of them from collecting a lot of paint in there and once we do that we'll be ready to do the paint and I think we've decided we're not going to primer because that paint does have primer in it and I can get about 10 bucks back for the primer I don't really think it's gonna need it so we'll just go ahead and return that primer we'll just use the paint and maybe do two coats of it but we're just gonna do some sanding now guys that's all for the cabinet as far as sanding now I do have to sand the removable back panel I didn't sand the top panel because it's painted white on both sides and I may leave that I may cover it with the uh, silver or gray I can't remember the exact name of the color but uh, the front panel I I may do the inside with that color but it didn't really need to be prepped I might have to lightly sand it if I paint it in the future but I thought it would be best to take it off for this sanding right now. But uh, the outside will probably stay white, and I may put the uh, may put the artwork on the outside, and I may have to trim it up in the uh, finish color for the inside just to make it kind of match up with the cab, or I may have to use a black. But right now we're going to get the air hose out and clean some of this mess up and uh, get this ready for paint. Hey guys, I got the cabinet all sanded on the inside. And I blew it out really good with the air hose, got all the dust and particles and stuff out of it. And uh, need to wipe the outside down where the laminate is because it probably got a little dust on it. But uh, we pretty much got it ready for paint on the inside. And uh, it was getting a little dark. It's about, it's around 7 o'clock right now. And uh, as you can see outside, it is pretty much pitch black out there. And uh, I just, I didn't want to go ahead and paint it even though I've got some lights out there and it is around 60 degrees. The paint says you can use it between 50 and 90 degrees. And uh, 
I could do that, but I would rather do it when I had some good light during the daytime. And uh, I need to come back into some of these screw holes and put these little plugs that I was talking about. I took a, a 3 8 inch dowel and I made some little plugs to go into some of those uh, recessed screw holes that I made. Kind of like uh, the ones right here where I extended these cleats. Now that's the original ones. After you come past that, that new uh, cleat there, you see the way I put the screws in, I just kind of put a recess into them. And these plugs will fit into those recesses like that. And I'm not going to leave them in there. This is just temporarily, you know. I mean, you could put something there like that, sand it down, leave it and all. But I want to paint this. I just don't want to cover up the, screw, the screws and gob that paint in there because it will come running out and you'll have drips everywhere. Um, these right here, I don't care if the heads get a little paint on them or if they get painted over. It's just these, not so much here, these in the front. But in the back, like on that strip down there, I, I did that. And I like the way it looked. And on the... Uh, the cleats right there that support the back side. I don't think this is going to focus. There it goes. Anyway, I recessed all those screws, and you will see that when you remove the back panel, and I think it would just look a little nicer if I left it recessed and didn't cover the screws up with paint, just left on the natural black color that they are. So to uh, prevent the paint from getting in there, gobbing up, pooling, running, all that kind of stuff, and just looking nasty later, I'm just going to plug the holes temporarily with these and I cut these on the table saw. Now I started with the Dremel tool right here and I seen it was burning them pretty bad and it was just taking, taking longer to cut each one. And so I just threw it up on my table saw and just started going through there and just cutting them off at about an eighth of an inch each one. And you know, some of them are a little thicker. Got like one right there that's pretty thick and, uh, and you see like the thinner ones like that. But it, it doesn't matter as long as they plug the holes. And we're just gonna put a little dab of rubber cement on the end of each one poke them in the hole and hold it for a second until it adheres and then uh, go on to the next one and after they dry a little bit we can start painting tomorrow and um, well actually they'll probably dry overnight because I'll probably do this part inside overnight and uh, later when the cabinet is painted even if these plugs are painted over we can just take a flathead screwdriver or something and just kind of pry those out pop them out and the rubber cement should release from the screws and everything so uh, we'll do that tomorrow and get the first coat of paint on it and uh, hopefully it'll look pretty good and we'll probably come back a few hours later. We have to attend uh, uh, attend a dinner for one of our nephews. Actually, both of our nephews have birthdays that are very close. So we're going to dinner, and after we come back from dinner, it should be ready for a second coat. But see you in the next clips, and we'll get that done. Okay, guys, we're outside today. Have a pretty nice day to work on the main cab and uh, get the interior painted. It's about 61, 62 degrees out here, and... Uh, We've got it in a spot that's getting a good little bit of sun there. The sun will probably come through just a little more within the next couple of hours. So I'm going to paint it right there so it'll get a little sun and dry. And I'm going to put one coat on it. And then uh, we're going out to a birthday party for my nephews. And by the time I get back, I should give it a couple hours to dry and I can put a second coat on it. So i got it on some thin cardboard here just to keep any drips from getting on the porch. And... Uh, this sun coming in in the front right here it should should get it good and toasty and should dry pretty good I might even move it forward just a little bit don't want to get it too far out from under the porch in case you know a lot of debris starts blowing I don't want anything sticking to it but anyways we're gonna get started on that and uh, last night we did come back and uh, cap those screw holes take a look right there Got those little caps on the screw holes for the rear cleats and uh, some down there for the bottom panels. I know that was like a screw, but it's not. It's one I cut with the Dremel tool. It's got a dark look to it. But uh, like those, that's the same as the ones I cut on the table saw. And then we got a couple up here in the front that we've done that way. So those will be removed. They're just in with rubber cement. They'll be removed after the painting process, and hopefully they'll still look normal. I just didn't want to gob a bunch of paint in there. And uh, the other screws, like that, and on that cleat right there, they're kind of flush. They can just have the heads painted. It'll be okay. But we're going to get started on that. We've got to stir our paint up and uh, get a coat on here before we take off. I've only got about an hour to do it in, so I need to get boogie in.
I'm just going to show you guys kind of what the color looks like. I don't know if it's going to pick up on camera. But I'm just starting on this monitor shelf because I know that's going to be covered up and that'll help me get used to the flow of the paint and uh, doing the brush strokes. You can see the brush strokes in there pretty good at the moment. But as this dries, it'll probably be less evident. But I want to try to uh, even out my brush strokes as much as possible and not gob it around. But you see we're just painting over the heads of some of those screws there. This will focus. It's having a little trouble focusing. Hmm. Well there you go, you can kind of see. It's going to paint right over the heads of some of those and it shouldn't be any problem. We're going to continue on now and I'll let you see some of the process as we go. Pretty much got the shelf for the monitor done. You can see a spot in front of you, it's real wet. It's not, you know, that it's not covered. It's just some of it's starting to dry and some of it isn't yet. And uh, started doing a little bit on the upper inside of the back there. So, gonna keep going from here. Hadn't done any of the sides yet. I want to save that most porous stuff. That's that's a little more porous. Actually, this was pretty porous here. But we want to save the sides since it's so porous for near the last, just in case there's any chance of any residue, anything splintering where I was sanding that. These panels, these newer panels, are a lot more, you know, like dirt and dust free. Uh, all of it's pretty dust free. I've blown it all out, but I just want to be careful about that. So we'll paint the smoothest panels. Yeah, I've got the uh, inside of the back panel painted. And uh, I went ahead and painted over that piece. I took the screws out of it earlier and I uh, didn't want to paint over those screw heads because they're kind of big pan head black screws. And I'm going to reinsert those later. But uh, kind of stopping short right up there. Probably come back and do those with a smaller brush. And uh, then move on either to the bottom of the cabinet down there or the sides. Most likely do the bottom. But uh, so we got two pieces out of the way. Got to keep going because it is getting warm right here and our paint's drying. Okay guys, we had to go and eat uh, lunch or dinner kind of in between with some family. And uh, I left what I had done. I didn't get the bottom done. I got most of the top on the inside. Like I say, I'm thinking of leaving the very top white because it's got a nice finish to it. But uh, just, just like this part of the inside and down here and of course these cleats. And uh, I've got the whole pan for the monitor and pretty much that side and the back. And uh, just got to start working on the bottom after I get this one side up here. But you can see it dried real good while I was gone. I hope you can see the sun's not directly on it anymore. But I'm going to hit it with the air hose right quick in case any debris out of the trees out here have let any small objects light on it. Because sometimes you won't know it if you leave it alone and it'll do that. But it's just getting a nice kind of a gray to it and uh, I think it contrasts pretty good with the black on the outside if you can see got fingerprints all over my black laminate but you can kind of tell the way the color contrasts there I think it's pretty nice and once we get all the circuit boards and stuff in place I think it'll look even better but uh, doesn't have much of a gloss to it it's kind of a flat color and uh, that's the kind of finish I chose I think I could have went a little more glossy but uh, I think this will be good. It, I wanted it to you know, make it easy to see other parts on the inside of the cabinet when you were working. I didn't want it to be too dark and I didn't want it to be you know, too glossy. I just wanted wiring and circuit boards and stuff to be plainly visible in case you had to work on something inside the cabinet and I think this will work out pretty good. We're going to get back to painting and we'll show you a little bit of it as we do it. Okay guys, as you can see, I've got this side over here pretty much painted. I stopped short up near the top because of those cleats. I don't want to get any uh, any of this color on the upper part if I can help it. Now I'll have to come back with a brush to cut in on that, uh, a more detailed foam brush that I have, and I'll finish that up later. 
but I do believe I'll probably leave this white. If I get any on it that I can't clean off, then I may go ahead and uh, paint it the same color as the rest of this. But uh, pretty much got the whole top done. And we're starting to move into the bottom areas. You see, I've already started some on that cleat back there. But uh, everything up here is pretty much coated. Just the upper part of those cleats needs to be touched up. So we're moving towards the bottom of the cabinet now and starting to work. And it is covering up the old black pretty good, even with one coat. Oh, we do have do have to get this cleat here. I missed that, so we've got to finish this little cleat right here. Okay, guys, we're continuing on. I finished the uh, back right here. I had a lot of paint to get in behind this board that holds the monitor in, and uh, the back of this panel here that holds the monitor in, and I had a lot of little crevices like that to get into, and I tried my best, and... Uh, got these cleats here. I'm leaving the very outside edge bare because it's going to see a lot of wear from that panel being inserted and removed. And the back I may actually leave natural and not paint it like the inside. If I do paint it I may come up with a different color or just put a clear coat varnish on it because I kind of like that wood grain here on the back. But uh, got those cleats painted all the way down on both sides. So no more cleats to mess with except for a little bit in the front up there and those two big ones on the bottom. And uh, when I was doing up under, let's see if I can show you here. When I was doing up under the monitor panel, I had to get those braces there, or those giant cleats that hold that monitor bracket in. And I didn't want to paint on this red laminate because this piece came out of the old cabinet. I just wanted to leave it red. There's no use in painting it anyway and the paint would probably just chip off. But I did want a clean line right there where the wood stops and the, uh, the laminate began. So I just stuck me a piece of masking tape across each side real quick. And once this dries just a little bit here in about an hour, I can just peel that off. And I'll have a nice crisp edge. I didn't try to be super careful with it. I just did it real quickly. It took me about five minutes. Just threw a couple pieces of masking tape under there just to keep any of that from getting too much on the, the red. Uh, you can see there's some there right here on this back edge, which I don't care about because it had a rough edge anyway where it had been cut. So I don't care about that. I just wanted those edges right under there to be crisp. So we're continuing on. Starting to paint down the inside. You can see there about a third of the way down. Got to finish on down, get the cleats, and then the bottom. I hadn't done anything on the this side of that one on the inside, but we're going to continue on now. Hey guys, as you can see, it's very dark out here. Side lights already cut on, watching me move around with its sensor, and uh, I cut our front porch lights on and the security lights up here. But uh, it's really not enough light to do this painting, even though the temperature would allow it. I got most of it done. I know you can't see too well, but uh, most of the interior is done. The only thing really left is the bottom and just a little bit of touch-up stuff. Just the bottom. And uh, if I paint that panel right here that the control panel is going to mount to, which I probably will. Um, but got the other panels in there. Let me see if I can get the flashlight. Got the other panels in there painted. I like one little trim piece right there. Got this other side painted. And uh, just running out of light. But it's all becoming a lot more uniform now. All these different types of woods all looking like the same thing now, so that's mainly what we're shooting for. The camera's having a hard time focusing now. Let's see if I can give it something to focus on. There we go. But anyway, we're going to take it back in the house, let it finish drying here for a couple of hours, and uh, tomorrow I'll have to come back and hit, oh yeah, that inside of that back panel there. I haven't got that yet. But... We got most of the rest of it that we're going to get. Got to get a little bit of trim up there. I need to mask that off and trim that. Just run out of time. If I would have had got an earlier start or just had a little more time, I could have got it finished. But that's okay. We won't rush it. We'll get this done tomorrow. Hey guys, brought the main cab back in after we've been painting some here on it. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, quite different. Looks a lot different than all those different shades of wood we had for cleats and all kind of stuff. Still got a couple pieces of masking tape here that I need to pull off where I mask that bottom shelf. Um, 
under this little shelf that helps support the control panel there is a, a little red laminate under it and I didn't bother masking it off I'm not going to paint it but there's a few smudges of paint under the edges uh, where the sidewalls meet and I don't really care because it's, it's going to be completely absolutely hidden I just something about that big tray there with that red laminate I just didn't like smearing paint on it for those cleats so I wanted to put a couple pieces of masking tape and we'll do the same tomorrow when we come to mask off the top I want to leave that white um, I just think it's a very good finish already uh, it's not ever going to be seen when you open the cabinet up really it's just the area where the marquee light will be mounted and I think that white paint is going to be a lot more reflective than this gray and we need that up there for when the marquee is installed to reflect that fluorescent light and put a, a large amount of light out where the trans light or the marquee, the glass marquee, whatever it ends up being is going to be mounted. You want something to reflect that light. And uh, when I box it in and put the, uh, the fluorescent light in there, I may even put some type of reflector, like some type of people, piece of metal flashing or something in there to help reflect that light forward. It just depends on how bright it ends up being. But I didn't just want to make it just too dark up there. So, you know, I think that'll work out okay. We'll just mask off some of this up here with some masking tape. And uh, you don't have to do an excellent job. We just want to paint those wooden cleats so the natural wood's not showing anymore. And we'll leave this white up here. And uh, we'll finish up the inside of our back panel. Finish up our bottom. And a little bit right here around these front cleats. And probably this top right here that had kind of the flat black to it. That's the only thing left that's not been painted over that had the original flat black from the inside. And it would be okay to leave it like it is since the control panel is going to cover it up. But it's going to be so easy to access. I'll just go ahead and throw a, a quick coat of paint on there. And uh, like I said, just finish those cleats up there. And, and the bottom of the back panel will pretty much be finished with all our interior painting. Um, I uh, may take the back panel, which I, I do need to do, and just sand it lightly on the inside and paint it to match. Uh, and maybe the inside of the speaker panel up here. But the speaker panel, I need to get some black laminate attached to it, and I need to kind of make some holes where the speakers are going to mount. And uh, what I'm going to end up doing is after the uh, hole, I'm probably going to drill the holes first in the speaker panel for the two speakers that will be mounted there. And then I'll... Uh, put the black laminate on it and after the black laminate has dried good the adhesive is dried and everything I'll come back where those two cutouts are for those speakers and I'll make some very tiny holes maybe about you know five to eight holes in each one so that the sound can come out of those speakers and from the you know front and the underside where the panel is it won't be obvious like they won't be you know some big holes for speakers or grills or any kind of mesh that's mounted over it the speakers will be behind the wooden panel and there'll be holes for the sound to come out and where the uh, black laminate is there'll just be some small perforations it'll be like looking at you know like the top of a giant salt shaker or something there'll be like some little perforated holes and I'll design them so that you know they look uniform for each the left and right speaker and that'll be enough for the sound to come out without taking away from kind of the the sleekness of the way the panel looks but uh, once this dries up a little more you can, you can still see a little differences in some of the paint where it was wetter or drier in some areas but you know it's, it's drying to a good flat gray color you know and I think that's just a good contrast with these sides now it's really coming together looking pretty good there so we'll finish working on this tomorrow and uh, let you see when we get all the painting done hey guys we got most of the cabinet painted yesterday I'm going to finish painting it today and I think I'm going to do it inside because I don't like very much and I can be careful and finish it up without carrying the cabinet out on the porch. But today we want to uh, paint the inside of the speaker panel and that won't take very long at all. We just got to kind of go around these cleats a little bit maybe and just do the back side. And then the other side we're going to put a piece of black laminate on. Not sure if we'll get to that today. It may be another day for that. But uh, the inside of this panel, this is the removable back panel with a lock we installed. I think I want to remove the lock and uh, then uh, paint this back panel. And since it's off the cabinet, it's just one big flat surface. We're going to take both these panels outside, lay them on the porch, and do them out there. And uh, or I might stand them up. Uh, sometimes you lay stuff down if there's any kind of debris floating around or anything falling. Like if you live around trees, like I do, sometimes it'll end up on your wet paint and it'll stick to it. So sometimes it's best to kind of lean it up against something and do it like that It'd be a little less possibility or you could paint it with it down and then lean it up to dry for a little while and uh, you could even cover it with something if you cover it with something in such a way that it's not actually touching the paint while it's drying 
So we're going to do those two outside. I might show you a, a clip or two of me uh, out there working on that. And uh, then uh, later, when it gets uh, closer to the evening, we have just went through uh, the time change. We're on daylight savings time now. We've got a little more daylight. It won't get dark till right around 8 o'clock. So uh, we'll probably just finish the cab inside, even if we have some daylight outside. But there's some other things we could do out there if we need to, like uh, the piece of laminate to uh, the other side of that panel. But that just depends on... Uh, just depends on how dry that gets. Uh, you know, I could always do the uh, black laminate to the other side and then come back and paint this side either way. So we'll just see how it works out. Hey guys, we just got our old block sander here and uh, we're gonna sand the uh, speaker panel a little bit. Gonna hit this side right here and this is the side the black laminate will eventually go on. But uh, I wanna sand it a little bit to get anything loose off of it. Uh, and so it doesn't soak up quite as much of the adhesive when we go to do that and just really just smoothing it a little bit and then the other side I'm going to do the same just to clean up any small splintering or any kind of debris or anything that might kind of be stuck on here just smooth it out before we paint it and then I'll hit the whole thing with the air hose and clean it up Hey guys, just finishing painting up the speaker panel and it looks very nice. It's just going to be on the interior, but you know, still looks nice. This color really dries kind of quick when it's uh, a little windy out here like it is. So I'm just working pretty quick and uh, it seems to be a f pretty forgiving paint. Even the brush strokes disappear after it dries really well, even on this, uh, this raw wood uh, with light sanding. So I'm just going to finish this up. i uh, got one more cleat to paint and just a little bit more, but we got most of the surface area. Okay guys, we got the speaker panel all done. Turned out nice. It's just drying a little bit right now, still have a little wet paint on it, but this stuff really does dry to the touch very quickly. Um, need to come back and maybe smooth a little bit right there where I got it just a little heavy. I come back with a little extra on there. I need to smooth that with the brush right quick. But as this is drying, I'm going to get the uh, removable panel for the back ready to be painted. And I uh, forgot to mention, since this, since this panel was such a tight fit in the cabinet around these cleats, hold on for a minute. Got goofy rednecks on loud ass motorcycles around here all the time. I don't know where his muffler is, but anyway, um, I may have to come back and lightly sand in between this cleat and the mounting cleat in the cabinet in case this small layer of paint here and in the cabinet makes it too tight to wedge this in. Uh, most likely I can just barely flex the cabinet to get it to slide in place, but uh, there's a possibility. Well, let's see. Yeah, that's the side. This side right here may have to be lightly sanded on the outside edge and this outside edge because they fit up in between some smaller cleats that are on the cabinet. But once this dries, it may soak it in enough to where it doesn't really make that much difference in the uh, the width of it. But if it does, we'll just barely lightly sand it and this will be installed and probably not removed unless we ever have to work on the speakers or something. So we'll just let that dry a little bit and get the other panel ready and uh, we'll be working on that in a second. We're just going to give our back panel some sanding here just to smooth it out a little bit before we paint it. And uh, I've left the little collar or surround of the lock mechanism up there installed at the moment. Um, I just didn't see really a need to take it off. I could take the whole thing off, but the nut for it, it didn't really seem to be the highest quality piece of metal that made the nut mechanism. And it felt like it might try to strip out and I don't want to work it off and then put it back on again. It was kind of hard to get on actually. Uh, and try uh, you know to put it back on and end up really messing the threads up or something because it just doesn't seem the best made lock in the world it came from Ace Hardware it's Ace's brand so I may replace that in the future but right now it's installed and working fine and I figured I'd just leave that part on I disassembled the uh, little locking lever in the back and the uh, 
the keyhole part that pops out of the other side I just left that little collar on and locked in place that you can install everything back into and I think I can use a very small foam brush and just touch right around the edge of it and if it has to be replaced in the future you know you know I can come up and uh, put the paint all the way up underneath the new new one and mount it in place so the color you know it's not evident that maybe I stopped the paint right at the edge so but anyway it'll, it'll look perfectly fine Okay hey guys, we're working on a removable back panel right now. Hope I uh, got my brush dry enough. I had to clean it out a little bit. It got a little bit of uh, paint dried up in it. And I went ahead and tried to clean it and I let it dry for a little bit. It's got it's got just a touch of moisture in it, so I hope it's okay. Hopefully it'll evaporate and it wasn't and you know, it won't be too much wetness that will mess up the paint or anything like that. But uh We'll just see. Live and learn. This stuff is, uh, you can clean it up with uh, soap and water. I just hope a little bit of moisture won't, won't hurt it. I don't think it's going to be a problem. There's a lot of imperfections in this piece of wood, especially up here there's a crack and some chips that have been pressed into the plywood. And the paint will cover some of that up, but it's not going to cover it all. But since it's on the inside of the panel, I just, you know, I chose to do that and keep the prettier side facing out. Okay guys, we're just finishing up here. Last few strokes on this. Okay, we're pretty much done. Uh, got a little bit more cutting in to do around the lock mechanism down there. I got real close to it. Um, I didn't really paint on it or anything, but I've got some fine detail brushes in the house. I can get those and just barely go around that a little bit, and it'll look just like I removed it and installed it with the paint underneath it. But uh, we're just going to let this dry some and get it back in the house, and uh, we'll finish up what's left on the cabinet. It's mainly the bottom and just a couple of cleats, I think. Uh, near the front of the cabinet but uh, we'll get this inside after it dries just a little bit and uh, we'll probably show you just a little bit painting the rest of the cab hey guys I have a small detail brush here this is really a brush I use for acrylic painting uh, I used to do acrylic painting a little bit I haven't done it in a long time need to get back into it because I've got literally 50 to 100 brushes like this different sizes and shapes but uh, this is one I used to use for some stuff and uh, I think it'll be okay for this paint. I'll just clean it up real good afterwards and keep it for my acrylic brushes. But it'll be real good for this detail now. So I'll show you a little bit of this. And if you hear a lot of noise in the background, that's our neighbors playing with their kids and their dog out in the yard. That's pretty much it guys. We'll let this dry and uh, as you can see it cut in around it pretty good. Um, I had already bumped it just slightly with the large brush and I stopped that after I uh, noticed I was getting a little tiny bit of paint on it. Let's see if this will focus. Here we go. But you can see it's set for some imperfections in the wood and all actually looks pretty good didn't get much paint on it or anything like that just touched it just a little bit on the front there but around the back I just did with my detail brush you can't can't tell much but uh, we'll get this back in the house in probably about 15-20 minutes here we're gonna let it dry outside some because there's a good little breeze blowing and uh, we'll start on the uh, rest of the cabinet Hey guys, just about to get started on the uh, insides of the main cabinet near the bottom that I didn't get yet. And uh, just a little bit around the trim there on the top. Everything else is pretty much coated. Oh yeah, that one panel there. Which I'm contemplating maybe not paint it, but I think I am going to paint it. Um, but anyways, uh, I was just going to show you. Remember some of these, like uh, those screws right there. 
I had come back and uh, put these little fillers in. I had cut off some tiny little uh, round pieces of wood off of a 3 8 inch dowel and I just wanted to stick them in some of these recessed holes where I'd put some screws and uh, these up here don't match up with like the original cleat down here because these are just been countersunk manually they didn't really pre-drill like a countersunk hole and then put it down in there and I've been painting over all those but the ones like this doesn't really matter up here because they're going to be covered by the front panel but like near the back um, it's kind of dark right there not sure if you can see but there's one right there if you look kind of near the center of your screen I had pulled the uh, little piece of dowel out of there and it kept the screws clean in there and they're kind of countersunk you can see one pretty good right there but I want to show you what it's like when you pull one out it actually worked out pretty good uh, you can see like I painted completely over this one here and uh, looks like oh wow it's, it's painted all in place and it might crack the paint all the pieces when you pull it out. Well this paint is pretty forgiving. It doesn't seem to be peeling or anything like that. And I got one right there like that. And what I did is when I put them in there I put just a little bit of rubber cement on the end of that little piece of dowel and just pressed it in and held it there for you know maybe about 20 seconds and then let go. And uh, on the rubber cement bottle it says if you want kind of a temporary bond to just put it on uh, one surface and then hold the pieces together and it'll give you kind of a temporary bond that you can easily remove. If you wanted more of a permanent bond, you would put it on both surfaces and then hold it together while they were wet, I think. I think that's what it said. So I just did that one surface and put it in there, and they're actually popping out pretty easy. You gotta kind of get them to break loose. See if I can do this one on camera here. Okay, there it goes. Popped out. I kind of rock it from the other side and then as you pull it if you kind of watch there's some rubber cement still holding it if you watch it will release see the rubber cement there see it just pulls straight off right off the screw head and see it's still stuck on the back of the, the wooden dowel and it actually doesn't really stick to the screw head at all let me get some light on that so you can see it See if I can get some light on it, but so it doesn't really stick to the screw head at all. It comes right off, so it's like perfect, you know. So it's just leaving on exactly like I want. Looks like you did a really good job of masking it out, you know, and just really just stuck a little wooden dowel in there. You could probably do it just by sticking in some rubber cement if you can brush it in there without getting it on the wood. But if you get it on the exterior surface of this wood and you don't sand it off or scrape it off good it's probably going to keep the paint from adhering so you want to be careful with that but if you can somehow just get a uh, some type of little swab or something and put some rubber cement on the heads of those then later you could probably just reach in there with some tweezers or something and just pull it out and it'll probably pull loose and it'll still protect the heads of the screws if you want to you know have that kind of clean appearance instead of painting over you know screw heads on any kind of project but let's see if this one comes loose but like you see it just it just kept the paint from going down in there that's all it did, it just kind of soaked up that extra paint there and protected the screw. And it's the first time I've done that, I just had the idea. I said, hey, that'd probably work. These would release very easy if it wasn't for the extra paint gunged around it, kind of holding it. It'd probably release very easy. Okay, there you see, it's, it's starting to come loose. Now just watch. See it pulling out? And then I just rock it back from the other side to keep the paint from you know, cracking and peeling and following the dowel. Okay, there we go. And then the rubber cement still hanging on. See the rubber cement? You just pull it and it just releases. Stays on the back of the dowel. It might be just a touch in there. You could probably just get a, a swab and put a little alcohol on it and just touch the head of the screw and rub it a little bit and it'll probably take that extra little bit of uh, rubber cement off the head of the screw. But it's kind of a nifty trick. I like it. Anyway, I'm going to get to painting some more of this in here, and uh, I'll come back and show you some results along the way and, and let you watch me finish some of the rest of this. I know it's like watching paint dry, but you know, you're just kind of watching the process as it goes. But we're almost done.
Okay guys, we got all the painting done that we need to do to the main cabinet. Um, a couple days ago I was uh, finishing up the painting on this and my memory card got full. That's when you, uh, in the last clip, see me painting on the bottom. I was just about finished with the, the bottom part, but got all that done. Got the front cleats done that needed to get done. Um, I painted this panel here and I think there was some cleats left up in this part up near the uh, top that we wanted to leave white so I got those painted and I mean it looks really good I mean it looks looks like just a complete unit instead of a hodgepodge of uh, different shades of wood and everything and uh, once you get the monitor in this and uh, even the back the back's been painted once we get that back on and the speaker panel which has been painted and we put the uh, the black laminate on the speaker panel it's going to really come together as a complete shell um you know we still need a lot of wiring to be done a lot of electronics and stuff have to go inside and uh, of course the all-important control panel must be finished um i have everything i need for the control panel i just haven't completed it i was uh trying to come up with a button layout and i think i've uh come up with a button layout and i'll show that to you guys in some of the uh following clips here in the next maybe in the next video or so uh, if I can get to it quick enough but I have picked my layout for the buttons and I've had all that hardware for the buttons and joysticks and trackball for a long time but uh, anyway this is just one more step here and uh, I think it turned out really good not the color I originally planned on I planned on a black and then I got to thinking I said gosh I got so much black here on the outside you know, let's just contrast it with something a little bit lighter. So, went with a uh, type of gray there. Iron Frost is the name by Valspar. And I uh, picked that up at Lowe's. But uh, I think it turned out really well. And uh, we just had to put some hardware back on it and uh, start putting in parts and pieces. Uh, I think, think maybe the next. The next thing I want to do is just finish up that speaker panel because, uh, you know, we do have to put that piece of black laminate on it and uh, get the holes ready and drilled for the uh, speakers that are going to be installed on it. And uh, I'm ready to buy artwork for it. I have my artwork ready and uh, like I say, I can't wait to get it and get it in installed. I want to pretty much at least get it, probably get it installed before I let you guys know the deal with the artwork but I think it's pretty cool I didn't mention that in uh, some of my other videos I just hadn't just hadn't let the cat out of the bag on some of that it's it's probably nothing anybody's expecting but it's just you know to me it's kind of interesting and is it there's a pretty cool story behind it but uh anyway I'm gonna let you guys go for now and uh, that's all the painting I've got probably about a third of a quarter of that Valspar paint there right there left and uh I want to return the primer. I didn't use that. I ended up just doing most of this is just one one good coat of Valspar and it had good coverage and I, I don't think it's going to take that much abuse inside the cabinet here so I think it's going to be just fine. But I'm going to let you guys go and I'll talk to you later.